2006 Environmental Engineering and Sustainability Week 4, 5 and 6 Week 4 and 5 and 6 Learning Outcome 1.0 Water Treatment 2.0 Coagulation Flocculation 3.0 Water Softening 4.0 Filtration 5.0 Disinfection 6.0 Aeration 7.0 Activated Carbon Absorption 8.0 Fluoridation This is the drinking water cycle Firstly, there will be a source which includes aquifer lake that will be transported to the water system and also to the distribution system and then finally to our homes or businesses and this is through the blue line which is the drinking water line and then our homes or businesses will produce the wastewater and all this wastewater will be carried by the red line which is the wastewater line towards the wastewater plant and then it will discharge back and then there will be have some of the wastewater will seep through which is the process infiltration seep through to the ground and then what is water treatment so water treatment start from here firstly intake a raw water pump station pumps water from a source into the water treatment plant and then rapid mix coagulants are added to the water and the water is mixed at a high rate to uniformly disperse them and then flocculation or sedimentation the coagulate will cause the fine particulates to attach together and form flocks the water is then aerated so that the flocks float to the surface for removal or is allowed to settle to the bottom which is sedimentation so in this process there are two types of flocks some will be floated which is aerated some will be at the bottom which is sedimentation so this all these flocks can be removed easily and then is the filtration process sand gravel and carbon filter such as granular actuated carbon GSC will remove any remaining particles which means in this process will remove those that cannot be removed at the flocculation or sedimentation process after that this infection the pathogenic microorganisms and viruses are destroyed or inactivated utilizing disinfectants such as chlorine or ultraviolet light this helps to kill the microorganism the viruses and bacteria that may may they may be harm to our body and then it will be pumped to the water storage tank and then storage it will be stored until it is needed to be used to for our homes businesses and school and then what is the waste water treatment waste water comes from homes and businesses and it will be carried through a series of pipes underground and then a pump station will lift the wastewater from the underground pipes and then the screening process the screen will remove the large debris from wastewater and then sedimentation the solid will settle to the bottom of a sedimentation tank while grease will float on the top the solid will go on through a digestion process which digest it and cause them to reduce their volume and also destroying harmful bacteria finally they will be disposed to landfill or used as fertilization fertilizer while other sewerage 
water will go through an aeration process, which is a bioreactor, where a series of stages where the beneficial material will break down organic material and clean the water. Interestingly, it will actually also have a clarification process which is the affluent is gravity fed through the secondary clarifier where beneficial bacteria are set up and returned to the aeration tank. That means the bacteria will be set up. That means the good bacteria will not be killed. It will be set up and then will return to the aeration tank again and then can be reused for the process of aeration again. And then this infection will occur. The clean water will be treated with chlorine and UV light to kill the remaining harmful bacteria. Finally, the clean water is discharged into the water supply sources such as the stream or groundwater. So 1.0 water treatment. In surface water, different compounds are present that must be removed if drinking water is to be produced. The compounds can be subdivided into A, suspended solid, colloidal solids, and dissolved solids to express the concentration of compound in water. Some parameters are used. The most important some parameters for surface water are suspended solid caused by suspended solid and colloidals. Turbility caused by suspended solid colloidals. Both of them are caused by the same substances. While other parameters will be natural organic matter, which is caused by the humic substances. And then also color, also caused by minerals and humic substances. In from 4 and 5 chemistry, actually we have learned that minerals have different color, like Fe sometimes will give us blue color. So minerals actually also play a role in our water color. And then purpose of water treatment actually is very important. It's to provide a portable water that is chemically and microbiologically safe for human consumption and has adequate quality for industrial users. Because uh, if the water is not treated, it will cause a lot of problems. It will really harm our human health, such as the incident at the Paseo Gudang. And then this is the compare between the three types of solid. Firstly, suspended solid, which is the diameter larger than 10 to the power negative 6 meter. The settling time is 35 hour. Example will be cateria, I think it's bacteria, algae, silt, sand, and organic debris. Well, colloidal solid, the diameter is between 10 minus 9 to 10 minus 6. The settling time will take 63 years, which is such as humic acid, proteins, colloidal clay, silica, virus. These all are very small things. And then, and then the soft solid is smaller than 10 to the power negative 9 meter would never settle that means we cannot settle it how long because it's dissolved in the water salts metal cation and ion that dissolve in the water so the water treatment process so how a water treatment plant works we can see that it's a process here and then here also there's also a process which so we should see this process first this is a general process so surface water intake with a screen activated carbon for taste odor and color removal if necessary and then coagulation in the mixing tank what is used? Alum is used for coagulation. Coagulant aid is to aid for coagulant. And then flocculation process. Flocculant is to aid flocculation. 
and then activated carbon is for the taste odor and color remover so you can you can see that we we uh, remove the taste color remover for two times before and after and then is the settling tank which is sedimentation process sodium flora i use for fluoridation fluoridation actually is very important because it can prevent the tooth decay and then filtration using dual media filter and then finally disinfection using a chlorine to establish a disinfectant residue how a water treatment plant works so firstly from well or lakes or river to the plant so coagulation is a special compound remove the dirt particle from the water and then sedimentation process the dirt settles to the bottom and the water becomes cleaner and then move on which is the filtration water passes through filter to purify it further and then finally disinfection which kills the germ so from the water tower to your home finally so this is the process of water treatment for the surface water and then this is from the ground water from our well so first we need to do the aeration process to increase the dissolved oxygen oxidize fe mn and also reduce carbon dioxide co2 and then we need to put chlorine to suppress growth of iron bacteria in pipes and initiate oxidize oxidation of fe and mn and then we need to use water softening to remove hardness we can use lime and soda edge to remove the hardness and then the same thing we also will use this infection to remove pathogens using chlorine and then we also use ammonia to convert the free chlorine residue to combined chlorine residue because as we know ammonia is an alkaline chlorine is an acid so they can mix together to neutralize each other and then flow Sialidic acid for fluoridation also for the tooth decay process okay from the well using a pump to pump the water up and then gone through an aeration process and then gone through the clarifier which is and then also add lime and soda ash is added which to form the softening process and then further clarify the clarify process is very important you can remove those um, sludge which, which is those deposit uh, and then this infection with using chlorine kills those bacteria and then clear well and then only go to our distribution system this is groundwater so what is the difference between groundwater and uh, our surface water as we can see that surface water we do not use aeration we need, do not need to increase the this soft oxygen for the surface water but for the well we need to increase and then for the well we also need to remove the hardness while the surface we don't need to remove the hardness but for the surface we need to use coagulant and flocculant but the groundwater no need to use both of them both also use need to use the this infection process because it's need, need to kill the bacteria so now come to the second part which is the coagulation and flocculation so firstly what happened actually in the water during this process Firstly, many of water contaminants contain matter in the colloidal form. This colloidal will result in a stable suspension due to its small size, state of hydration, and surface electric charge. In general, those colloidals have a negative charge. And since they have the same type of surface charge, 
they repel each other when they come close together. Therefore, colloidal solid will remain in suspension and will not clump together and settle out of the water unless coagulation and flocculation is used, which means they are difficult to be clumped together because they have charges, they have negative charges, so they need the help with coagulation and flocculation so that their leaves can stick together and be removed. Purpose to agglomerate suspended metal and colloids into flocks that can be separated from the water by sedimentation and filtration. Also to destabilize and remove turbidity and not yet uh, explain turbidity. Actually turbidity is mostly those um, appearance of milky, murky, which is the brown color light of the water. It's in order to remove the brown color. The color, odor producing compound, penogens, natural organic metals. And also substance that interfere with the disinfection and also reduce the amount of disinfection by product. So it is quite an important process. So we can see that coagulants are added into the water and the impurities which is dispersed is formed precipitate trapping the impurities stick together and then we'll settle to the bottom and this is sedimentation. You can see it from a simple experiment. At first it's milky, mucky the water and then all is clump together when coagulant added and then it settled down. And then it can be removed and the water is clean again. So coagulation, fl flocculation, we make a comparison between them. So coagulation is chemical process while flocculation is a physical process. Coagulation destabilizes colloid by the addition of the chemical that neutralizes the negative charges by rapid mixing. And this one is the agglomeration of the destabilized colloids into a larger flock, which can be effectively removed by sedimentation or flocculation. Do you realize that we actually use coagulation first because we use it to destabilize it, cause them to neutralize the negative charge so they only have the opportunity to using this to agglomerate into larger flocks so that it can be removed. So this process needs to be done together with coagulation first and then after that flo flocculation. And then the mechanism is the charge neutralization while the flocculation is chemical joining or bridging which means forming colloids to into the larger flocks and then coagulant is often a sort that breaks down to release the charge flocculant is often a polymer which induces the settling of particles and eventually grows into larger flakes so what are the example? For coagulant, the example will be aluminium sulfate, alum, and also ferric salt. And then the eight will be the polymers. And then the type of flocculant is polymer. So we can see that actually flocculants can be an aid to coagulant. It will help to even both the coagulant. And then rapid mixing is required in order to disperse the coagulant throughout the liquid because this is a chemical process we need to mix it so that the whole liquid actually uh, the colloid inside there actually will be neutralized and then gentle mixing is only required to cause the destabilized colloid to cluster because if we mix too much maybe we will destroy the flocks that are formed so we just use the gentle mixing will be enough and then we can see that this is the charge neutralization 
positive and negative together become and then this is a strip coagulation there is total of four mechanism based on this is breaching and then this is patch flocculation so firstly for coagulation mechanism is the charge neutralization the positively charged metal coagulant is attracted to negatively charged colloid via electrostatic interaction flocks start to form during the neutralization step as particles collision occur so it will is a starting part the charge neutralization and then the strip flock a particular pH condition and high coagulant concentration the ferrum and aluminium will precipitate as ALOH3 or FeOH3 so colloid is then tend to absorb to this solid and become a mesh in the resulting flux so this is the strip coagulation so we can realize it's a particular pH and also a high coagulant concentration the ferrum and aluminium will start to form ALOH3 and FeOH3 so another process is breaching breaching is occur when the high molecular weight polymer absorb simultaneously on more more than one particle it in more a formation of the bridge between the particles and flocculant and aggregation of particles bond by a long chain polymer and then finally patch flocculation result from the absorption of usually relatively low molecular weight poly electrolyte molecule on opposite oppositely charged particle surface usually effective and perform consistently but result only in relative small flock so this is not so effective because it is small flocks only bridging will have a larger flux after that jar test Jar test is an experiment to understand the process of coagulation, flocculation, and sedimentation. So, why we need this test? In order to select the best type of coagulant, also to estimate the optimal dose. That means, optimal dose means how much we should put, neither in removing the charged particles that occurs in raw water. Jar test is an experiment to understand the process of coagulation, flocculation, and sedimentation. So, procedure. We have jar test apparatus consists of six batch brickles and equipped with a pedal mixer for each bricks brickle. In a standard practice, jar test involve rapid mixing, followed by slow mixing, and later the sedimentation process. So, we now we uh, recap. The objective of coagulation is to remove most suspended solid to remove a portion of the organic precursor which may combine with chlorine to form this infection byproduct because we need to remember that we will need to add chlorine at the end of the process so this chlorine if we don't remove things through coagulation the chlorine will react with this type of thing and form the product that we do not want and then to produce large volume of flock which can also entrap bacteria as they settle and then working principle when added to water this highly charged ion neutralize the suspended particle the inorganic hydroxide that are formed produce short polymer change which enhance micro flock formation Inorganic coagulants such as aluminium and iron salt are most commonly used because it has the lowest price. This will be linked to the economic application of engineering and also is widely available. Okay, alum. This is the formula of the process where the aluminium sulfate will react with calcium bicarbonate in order to form the flux 
where ferric sulfate also will be reacted also will form flux and then ferric chloride also and then mixing the rapid mixing after coagulant dosing is an important design parameter the coagulant must be uniformly mixed with the raw water in case mixing is poor local under and over dosing occurs resulting in poor performance of the process so it's really important to mix it because we need to neutralize the whole water sample and then formula the mixing intensity is represented as follow so we have this formula g actually is the velocity gradient for rapid mixing s minus one which is the one divided by time is g and then p is the dissipated power in watt and then rho no it's mu sorry it's mu which is the dynamic water viscosity kg per meter s and then also the volume of the mixing tank in meter cube so two different mixing system can be applied one is the mechanical mixing mechanical mixer will dissipate the power in the raw water example mechanical mixing blade static mixing use the gravity forces cause the mixing effect example cascade water fall over well into a receiving body in the turbulent space that is caused by the falling water coagulant is those so for this way we pour the water into a receiving body so there will be a turbulent and then tur the turbulent we, we will put the coagulant is though so this is also another way of mixing it and then flow accumulation after coagulation and the resulting destabilization of particles the particles must collide the collision of particles can take place under natural circumstances or by dissipation of mixing energy parameters that are important to design flocculation units are the following residential time residence time distribution velocity gradient for flock formation gb and also flock volume concentration so we have more we have more which is perikinetic flock formation and orthokinetic flock formation so we can see it's this one and this one before this i'm not because here is perikinetic flock formation so we can see that it's under natural circumstances and then this is dissipation of the mixing energy so this peri is because of the brownian motion this we have learned previously which is the movement of the smoke particles which we found that they actually do not have a uniform way or predictable way which it will just move randomly which is brownian motion and then this famous paper described the decrease in the total number of spherical particles as a function of time with the following equation so equation again dn over dt which is this is a um, differential equation the n is the n is the total number of particle per unit water volume and then alpha is the collision efficiency k is boltzmann constant t is the absolute temperature t this t for this t is the time because because this is a differential equation so from the experiment actually conclude that it's a fast process but result in poor settling characteristic of the form flux so you want fast or you want good result definitely you need good result fast is no use just like learning and then for the auto kinetic flux formation the collision frequency of the particle is artificially increased by mechanical 
maxing. So the decrease in the total number of particles is described as follows. This is dn over dt is the same thing. Both is negative dn over dt. Both is the same thing. Which is the decrease in the total number of particles as function. Because we know that we need to decrease the number of particles so that the water only can be clean. But both there are some different. Both also 4 over 3, 4 over 3. And then also alpha, alpha, which is the collision efficiency. But what's different is it also have 1 and 1 and 2 which is a number of particles with diameter d1, number of particles with diameter d2. And then also have a r, which is the collision radius r cube. And gv, the velocity gradient for flock formation. So with this equation, it can be calculated that the formation of particle with a diameter 1 millimeter only one micrometer only takes place when velocity greater higher than ten. Otherwise, flow is formation is predominant. So it must be ten. The vel the velocity gradient must be higher at least higher than ten for the one micrometer. If not, it will not have any value. So please bear with me. Let me tell you more about water softening so water softening is a chemical process in which hardness causing ion ca2 plus and mg2 plus are removed from water either completely or partially why we do not want hardness in water because it will cause soap scum through ca2 plus plus soap minus into ca soap 2 hence Increase the amount of soap needed for washing, which is wastage of the soap. And it also will cause scaling on pipes and hot boilers. And then it will cause waft to stick due to the formation of calcium carbonate crystals. And then it also will leave stain on plumbing fixture. So if we do not softening the water, then we have a lot of problem. We need to have more maintenance work for our household. So, for 0 to 40 concentration of CaCO3 is classification as soft. So, actually hardness there is, um, we should be lower than 40. So, we can prevent the scale in water heater. And then 40 to 100 is moderately hard, still can be accepted. And then 100 to 300 mg per liter is really hard. And then consumer will object to this water with hardness. And then 300 to 500 is very hard. More than 500 is extremely hard. This, the impact will really be excessive for the public water supply. So, hardness says previously I have said that is the sum of the divalent metal cation existing in water, such as Ca two plus and Mg two plus. Divalent means two plus, which it has a two uh, covalent. No, it has a two ion as its outer outer orbit, and then. The unit is mg slash l, which we know the concentration of the hardness. Measure the concentration of the hardness. And then the source of hardness will be the major source Ca2 plus and mg2 plus, minus source Fe2 plus and Mn2 plus. Type of hardness, carbonate hardness, Ca2 plus, mg2 plus, associated with. How is CO3 minus CO3 2 minus often called as temporary hardness because heating the water will remove it. When the water is heated, the insoluble carbonate will precipitate and tend to form as a bottom deposit in water heater. And then the non carbonate hardness, which is associated with other like Cl minus, NO3 minus, COF, CO4 2 minus. So we can see that carbonate will form together with this divalent metal cation to form 
when it's heated we will have the insoluble carbonate and there are also still other associated with other ion so it has Cl- minus with chloride nitrate and also sulfate so total hardness is the sum of the carbonate hardness and also the non-carbonate hardness so type of water softening first one lime soda ash water softening process so carbon dioxide require the addition of lime caoh2 for complexation it requires it to form the calcium carbonate and also the carbonate hardness require the addition of lime for complexation and then also the non-carbonate hardness also require the addition of soda ash for precipitation so all of it need different the watering softening process so for the first one carbon dioxide we can actually remove it using lime because lime plus carbon dioxide we can get calcium carbonate so it's but carbon dioxide is actually do not have much hardness as well but it consumes lime and must therefore be considered as well so one more lime is needed because actually it do not carbon dioxide do not really contribute to the hardness but we need to calculate correctly because we need the correct amount of lime to neutralize the carbonate hardness if the lime is used all for carbon dioxide and then we didn't calculate for carbon dioxide there will not be any lime left for the carbonate hardness so this is the carbonate hardness there are two types which is calcium bracket hco 3 2 and also magnesium bracket hco 3 2 for this one precipitation of carbonate from lime so ca2 plus will react with 2 hco 3 minus and also react with the lime calcium hydroxide to form calcium carbonate plus h2o and calcium carbonate can be removed because it's a solid and then the other one is the precipitation of carbonate mg2 plus from lime leaving mg2 plus in the solution so this also mg2 plus react with 2 hco3 minus and also the lime and then from calcium carbonate which can be removed the precipitation of carbonate mg2 plus from lime we also actually further form other substance because we can see that there's mg2 plus and then mg2 plus will react with co3 2 minus and also lime again to form magnesium hydroxide and calcium carbonate so for this one two more of lime is needed because we use the lime for the two part of the process and then for non-carbonate hardness we have four types the first one magnesium sulfate so precipitation of non-carbonate sulfate from lime leaving ca 2 plus in the solution so magnesium 2 plus plus sulfate will and also the lime will form magnesium hydroxide ca 2 plus and so4 2 minus for this one the process for magnesium chloride the process also almost the same just that when it's react it will form ca2 plus and 2cl minus which is different by this ion form one is from sulfate one from two chloride and precipitation of non-carbonate from soda ash so the ca2 plus form by both of these will further react with soda ash and add 2co3 to form calcium carbonate so this is the final process so we need lime and also soda ash in order for the non-carbonate hardness we need both because lime is the first process which produces the calcium 2 plus ion 
and then so that this, this calcium two plus ion can really act with the soda ash to form to form the calcium carbonate, and then calcium sulfate. The precipitation of non-carbonate calcium two plus from soda ash. So this directly react because calcium two plus plus SO four two minus and then also plus the soda and then directly form calcium carbonate. Because we no need to use lime for this one because the calcium two plus is already there. So we can directly use the soda ash. So one more of soda ash is needed. And calcium chloride we also do not need to use lime because the calcium two plus is already there and react with the soda to form calcium carbonate. So one more soda ash is needed. So this is part four filtration. The last part of this video. Part five to part eight will be continued at another video. So firstly, four point zero filtration. Coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation previously is to remove much of the colloidal material that causes turbidity, which cause the milky color of the water. So for this part, these three things have do their job already, so now filtration will do job. It further remove colloidal material that cause turbidity, coliform, gradia and crypto. In more flow through a bit of granular media such as sand, anthrite, granite or activated carbon. Working principle. As the water passes through the media, the suspended particles are entrapped in the pore spaces of the media and thus removed from the water stream. It's the same um, same way principle as our water treatment as at home. Because when the water passes through directly those particles will be attracted at the pore to be removed. There are two types of filter. The first type is granular media filter, a slow sand filter. And also there is also another one is the rapid sand filter. Another one will be the mem membrane filter. A which is the micro filtration. B ultra filtration. C nano filtration and D reverse osmosis we always hear this at Singapore so filtration mechanism is modeled as a two-step process first particle transport in ocean impaction some colloidal particles have too large a mass to follow sharp turns in the flow Streamline. The inertia of these particles carries them out of the flow stream. These particles strike the medium and are held there because inertia is greater than the hydrodynamic force. This removal mechanism is called inertia impaction. Recall back inertia in our secondary school, what we have we learned actually. Inertia is an object tend to move unless there's a force that will stop it. So actually a lot of time this color the particles will just follow, will just move, even though actually there are something to stop them. There's this type of inertia that trap the particle so that it will not flow again because inertia is greater than the hydrodynamic so it will start at the point of the filter so it can be removed so this is the diagram for inertia impaction the particle the filter fiber here so it's stuck there that means when it want to flow actually the flow stream is quite strong but the inertia is working it's in this direction it will not want to change its direction up there and then secondly is diffusion. Some colloidal particles that flow at low velocity move in an erratic path. Brownian motion again, erratic path, which is a random path, a path that cannot be predictable. The erratic path increases the probability of particle coming in contact with filter medium. That means it will not go up, it will not 
like us human in order to escape from the obstacle escape from our responsibility it will through brownian motion through the erratic path it will start at the filter fiber the third method will be interception in some cases the flow streamline pass very close to a media grain colloidal particles following this streamline will touch a media grain and become lodged this removal mechanism is called interception sometimes it will keep following this flow stream and then it will until here at this very last moment it say i don't want to follow you to go away i want to follow this filter fiber deeper i want to stay with him i don't want to stay with this flow stream so this is called interception it will touch the media grain and also become lodged to it and then finally sieving some colloidal particles are too large to pass through pore spaces in the filter media bed this particle become trapped and are removed this removal mechanism is called straining so this one is the particle is too large it's stuck between two filter fiber you can see this one only because actually the filter fiber is quite far away but because the particle is larger so it will be stuck so this is also one of the mecha filtration mechanism so there are four so filtration mechanism is modeled as a two-step process first step is particle transport second is particle attachment so the principal pas partic pa particle attachment are through two methods chemical bonding and physical attraction because of electrostatic or when the was forces so overall removal the sum of all mechanism is equals to the mechanism of particle transport and also the mechanism of particle attachment so we need to move the particle at the same time we need to let the particle to be attached together only is the overall mechanism and how they are function through this chemical bonding physical attraction both way so what happened when a filter clock normally at home when our filter clock we will just change it or we will wash it see which way if it's really too spoil we will change it but okay let us focus on this so as filtration continues colloidal particles become and become trapped in the media the pore spaces between the media grain become smaller causing increased straining action increased velocity of water through the pore space why the velocity will increase because it's there are a lot of these colloidal particles there so it can't move so it will have some obstacles so the velocity will increase surely just as our blood vessel when we have the pl plaque in our blood vessel our blood will also not flow because it's blocked and so it will need to have higher velocity in order to flow and this maybe will cause stroke which is a very miserable state and then increase shear forces of the water flowing through the media bed when velocity increases definitely shear forces will increases also and then also increase head loss of the water flowing through the media that means more forces will be need to overcome the obstacles ahead the net result is a decrease in filtration rate so the filtration rate will be slow so for example at the filter at our home we will for a long time we didn't wash it we didn't change it it will be very slow say so why i want to drink a water also so long because it's stuck so the performance efficiency everything will be affected is clock what happened when the filter is clogged the shear forces of the water flowing through the meter can be so great that the particles are dislodged as rapidly as they are deposited to cause an unacceptable water quality known as turbidity breakthrough so it will be so strong that previously 
the particles that actually have been lodged here, you see. Have been lodged here, lodged here, lodged here, lodged here. Will be so large that now the water will just cause them, force them to go away and then the water will become turbidity again will become milky and brownish color again so the heat loss of the water fl flowing through the media bed can exceed the available heat so what is the meaning? that means the loss is even more so the water will not flow in the direction as it is it will flow backwards flow back into the the coagulation and flocculation process previously instead of flowing to enter to the next process so the filter should be clean when either one this condition occur so you can see that filter flow should be like that but over time the problem is like this it will be smaller and smaller and worse still it will go reverse okay granular media filter the objective they have two objectives first one is effluent quality measure as a percentage of particle removed the second one is filter run length measure as heat loss accumulation so you to know that how many percentage of particle is removed and also the heat loss accumulation so heat loss of a clean granular media filter is smaller than 0 0.9 meter heat loss of a clock that means which uh, a long time is 2.4 to 3 meter so need bad washing and cleaning so when we know it's 2.4 to 3 meter so that we know that we need to do something action speak louder than words so how do we achieve the design objective first media selection second depth of media third filtration rate so we can see this the whole thing the influence channel water trough the waste wash water sand support river so let us see these are the heat loss through filter media so formula again so first one heat loss in a homogeneous granular media bed for a clean filter and then this is the heat loss for a filter with a green size distributed in a filter bed for a clean filter both are with clean filter for media bed what is the difference of both the difference are one is homogeneous one more is with a green size distribution this is the difference between two so let us see both is HOL the heat loss per unit depth of filter bit HL remember that we need to determine it in order to know whether it need to be washed or not so this is the equation that we can use so J is a constant of 6 for filtration in the lamina flow region J and V is the kinematic viscosity the difference is one is using K one is using J K is a constant of 5 and then both also use this V which is a kinematic viscosity of the liquid itself and then one minus this the, the symbol of the strain porosity of the stationary filter bit and then for this one also have it's the same thing 1 minus epsilon and then bracket square and then V is also the same thing this V is different this V is this this is this kinematic viscosity and this V is the volumetric flow rate per bit cross section area and then FG is the acceleration of gravity which is 9.81 and then still this one epsilon cube epsilon cube when you use the d square the mean green 
diameter because of homogeneous we will use the mean one the average while this one will be using the spherity of grain the ratio of surface area of equal volume sphere to the actual surface area of grain this square size square yeah size square this is a grain size distribution method that's why it will use this the summation of something the pi the fraction of the total weight of filter grain in any layer divided by the di geometric mean diameter of grain in layer i so we need to apply the formula to solve our question 